Hi everybody, my name is Miss Alyssa if you haven't met me yet and I'm excited that we can meet together today to talk about the Bible and a story in the Bible. The story that we're going to talk about has a man named Elisha in it and he goes to the school of the prophets which we talked about last week but this week they're going to do some work and there is an axe head that falls into the river. And you know what happened? Well, we're gonna talk about it in a little bit and you can find out. But before we get started, I wanted to sing a song called, This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Kayla is gonna sing it for us, or sing it with us, because I hope that you're gonna sing it too. So can you sing that now with us? God has given us this day and that he's given us this time that we can talk about the Bible. His note to us about how much he loves us. God wants us to be together to talk about the Bible and to come to Sabbath school. I'm here and you're there. We're going to sing a song about look who's come to Sabbath school. So if you have a mirror, go ahead and pause this and go get it now. And we're going to hold it up so we can see ourselves. And if anybody else is with us, put it on them too. And let's sing look who's come to Sabbath school. Are you ready? Look who's come to Sabbath school, Miss Alyssa, Miss Alyssa. That's me but you do you. Look who's come to Sabbath school, Miss Alyssa has. Did you sing the song? Sing it for everybody that's with you. And then we're gonna do our memory verse next. So if you have a piece of paper or a whiteboard, can you get that now so we can do our memory verse together? Our memory verse is serve each other with love. And that's in Galatians chapter five, verse 13. So now we're gonna go ahead and spell it out. So serve is S E R V E each other E A C H O T H E R serve each other with W I T H meanness. Serve each other with meanness? No, that's silly. It's serve each other with what? Love. That's right. Love. Period. And it's in Galatians, that G-A-L-A-T-I-A-N-S, chapter five, verse 13. That's in the Bible. Do you have a Bible book at home? I have this one, and it has Bible stories in it. I also have one that looks like this. Maybe your mom or dad or your grown-up has one. And you can actually find Galatians in there where you can find Galatians 5 verse 13. If you can do that or your, or your grown-up can help you. Or you might have a book like this. We're going to sing a song about the Bible. 
It's called, I Open My Bible Book and Read. Kara and Caleb are gonna help us sing that now. I open my Bible book and read. He loves me, he loves me. I open my Bible book and read. He loves me, he loves me. Again, I am so glad that God gave us the Bible. And I'm so glad that you have a Bible to be able to look in. I'm going to go ahead and pray now. Because who do I want to be with us when we study the Bible? That's right, God. So if you can be with me and we're going to kneel. And I'm going to keep my eyes open and... Pick up the duck. No, what are we going to do? When we kneel, then we're going to fold our hands and do what with our eyes? Keep them open? No, we close our eyes. And do you know why we do that? We fold our hands and close our eyes so we can think about Jesus only. If we're touching things, then we're thinking about those things. If our eyes are open and we're looking around, then we're thinking about what we're looking at. So when we fold our hands and close our eyes, we can think all about Jesus. So can you help me pray now? Okay, fold your hands and close your eyes. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. And we ask that you would be with us as we study our Bible story. Please help us to share what we know about you. Thank you that you hear our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for helping me pray so that God is here with me and God is there with you as we talk about our story. So if you remember at the beginning of our Bible lesson, I said that our story is about Elisha again. And Elisha, last week, do you remember what kind of school did he go to? He went to the school of the prophets. That's right. Well, he was there at the school of the prophets again. And he was helping them. He was serving them. Do you think that he was nice and kind to those people that were there? I think so. Because who is nice and kind to us? God, that's right. So when we pray, God comes into our hearts and helps us to be nice and kind to others. We can show them love. Because Jesus first loved us. So we're going to stand up and we're going to sing a song. Kila is going to help us, and we're going to sing, Jesus, what does he do? He loves just dogs. No. Jesus loves me and you and everyone. So let's sing, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I know. Oh, the Bible tells me some little ones do when we long, they all be pretty and strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Thank you. I asked some of our friends about some small things that they can think of 
around them. One person said a ladybug. Another small thing is a penny. Something small that we eat. Blueberries. Something small that we drink. A water droplet. Something small that might be creeping us out. A little spider. And this is a small fish. So all of these things that are small, are they unimportant because they're small? No, they still have a big part in God's nature. Think about a water droplet. One water droplet might not be a lot by itself, but when you put one and one and one and one together, what does that make? A lot of water. Do we need water? Yes, we do. We need water to drink, to water our plants, so we have food to eat, to help so that our animals have something to drink, so that our land is not too dusty and dry. There's so many things that we need water for. And it starts with one droplet. What about pennies? So one penny, you might say, it doesn't really matter, it's just one penny. But one penny, two pennies, three pennies, four pennies, five pennies, six pennies, and pretty soon you have a dollar, and then two dollars, and it keeps going and going. One penny is important because it, it can add to more pennies. And that might mean the difference between you being able to get food or not. So all of these small things God cares about. God is made and they're important. Hi, Lucas. Hi. Could you show us some of the smallest things you found today? Mm. Yeah? What do you have? Dime. Dime. A bottle. Flower. Pebble. Pebbles. Bottle. Flower. Bees. Bees. We just talked about those small things in our lives. Does God care about those small things or just big things? God cares about small things too. And he wants us to help others with their small things in their life. So maybe your mom needs chapstick. That's a small thing, right? But if you can go and get it for her, does God want us to do that? Yes. Maybe your brother or sister needs some help with getting some ice in their cup. So maybe we might say, well, it doesn't really matter because it's just a small thing. No, God wants us to help people with small things, just like he helps us with small things. And do you know that even though it's a small thing, God can help us and we can do anything through God because God is so weak and so sad. No, God is so great, so strong and so mighty there's what? Nothing my God cannot do. So let's stand up where we are. And Noah is going to help us sing, My God is so great.
so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My dad is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my dog cannot do for you. My dog is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my dog cannot do for you. The mountains are his, the valleys are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my dog cannot do for you. Now whisper. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. The mountains are his, the valleys are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. Now loud. The mountains in my God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big. So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. The mountains are his, the valleys are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. So who was it that we said we were going to talk about today in the Bible story? Elisha. If you said Elisha, you're right. So here's Elisha and he was going to, do you remember the school? What the school was called? The school of the prophets where these young men would learn about Jesus. And they would learn about the Bible and so that they could share to everyone around them about God. So it was a very popular school. God helped it to be successful. So I don't know if you can see, but there's lots and lots of people, even more than what we can see here. And they only had a couple buildings at their school. And the people that went to that school, they would stay there, they would sleep there and eat there and do their school there. So they needed a place for their beds and the, with the bathrooms, but they were running out of space. So it looks like they had to go to where there was more trees so they could cut down wood there. So they had to go where there was more trees so they could cut down the branches and build a bigger school. Well, these young men, they didn't have a lot of things. So one of them asked, his, asked a neighbor by the school to borrow an ax. I'm gonna show you a picture of an ax right now. An ax is very heavy. Like you could see, it had a big metal top on it and a big long stick of wood and they would use it and we still use them to this day to cut trees to cut wood so one of like i said one of the young men borrowed an axe from the neighbor and they were cutting down the trees you see they're by a river a big river with lots of water and they were working and working it was a hard job and one of the the boys he had the axe and he was gonna swing it down and it flew 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 into the water <gasps> and what do you think a heavy metal object does when it goes into the water will it float like a rubber ducky no, it sank. And he was so worried because he had borrowed that from someone and they were very expensive. He didn't know what to do. What was he going to do? The neighbors would not think good of the School of the Prophets 
if they were seeing that they were borrowing things and not bringing them back, if you borrowed something from your friend or from your neighbor and you made a mess of it and ruined it and couldn't bring it back, would your neighbor think good of you? No. So they were very worried. This young man, he was very worried and he talked to his friend and he said, what am I gonna do? And the friend said, well, I know we need to pray and let's go tell Elisha. So they went and they told Elisha about it. And Elisha said, this is very important. It might be a small thing, but we're gonna pray to God about it. So they did. And then God told Elisha to go by the river and put a rod over the river where they saw the ox go down into the water. Now, I don't know about you, but if I hold, held a stick over the water where some heavy thing may have fallen, is it, is that heavy thing gonna just float to the top? No, but can God do anything? Yes, he can. So Elijah held the stick over and what do you think happened? What happened to the ax after it fell into the water? It rose up, 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 up to the top of the water. Wow, that is an amazing miracle. So, did God care about the small things? Yes. Did God care about the big things? Yes. What was the big problem in our story? If you remember, they had this school here but was the school too big or too small? It was too small, that's right. So they needed to big up, build a bigger school. So that was their big problem. Then while they were cutting the wood for the school, what happened that was the small problem? They lost the ax. That was a smaller problem but God cared about both things, right? So God helps us to help each other, to serve each other. When we serve each other, it's the same thing as helping each other. Elisha helped the, the young man at the school of the prophets. And the neighbor who let the other young man Borrow the ax said he was helping them too. And when we help each other, we want to make sure that we're really mean, right? We got to be very, very mean. No, that's silly, Miss Alyssa. We have to serve each other, well, we want to serve each other with love, Galatians 5.13. And who helps us serve each other with love? God, that's right. When we serve each other, when we help each other, we're like a light that shines in the dark. We're going to sing the song, This Light of Mine. Can you stand up and help me sing this now?
are a light. God helps you to be a light. You might be young and you might be small, but can God still use you? Yes, even more so sometimes than big people like me or your adult, your big person. God needs you to be a light. So when you think about helping others, think of that song, This Little Light of Mine. I'm so glad that God gave us the story of Elisha and how it is an example of how God cares for and cared for them and God cares for us and how we can help care for others because God cared for us first. There's a Bible verse that says, we love God because he first loved us. We are gonna go ahead and end our Sabbath school now. But before we do, can you pray with me? Remember, we're gonna kneel down. We're gonna fold our hands and close our eyes. And let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for the story of Elisha. Thank you for showing us that you care about big things and small things. Help us to care for others in a loving way as well. In Jesus name, amen. Thank you again for joining me for the Bible story. And I hope that you'll share this with your friends, your family, people that you know, so they can learn about Jesus too. And I hope that you will join us next week when we hear about another exciting Bible story. Have a good week. See you later.